All right, super. Uh, so thanks for having me, everyone. Um, as I, uh, Helen said, I'm Luis Ortiz, a postdoc fellow uh, at the Urban Systems Lab at the New School, uh, where uh, I'm a co-PI along with Ahmed Mustafa and Tyler McPherson uh, on an NSF rapid project to study overlapping hazards uh, uh, or, or weather and COVID-19 hazards in New York City, uh, as well as uh, access, different access to, to uh, uh, adaptation measures and, uh, and social vulnerability uh, across the city. So uh, New York City, uh, as a function of its uh, extremely high population for, for US standards, and, and where it sits geographically, it's subject to a variety of uh, weather-related hazards. Uh, these range from heat waves, thunderstorms, uh, coastal and uh, uh, sort of a uh, riverine flooding. Um, and these hazards can, can occur separately, but they also often occur uh, uh, you know, in either temporal or spatial overlaps. Um, and quick examples of those include uh, when we have a heat wave that is either followed or, or preceded by, by a large thunderstorm, uh, or when we have extreme heat and, and uh, high air quality uh, issues uh, in different parts of the city. Um, and uh, there, there's a growing body of work that has found that uh, these hazards are not evenly distributed um, and the, their impacts are, are, are felt, uh, or there's large inequities in the impacts felt by these uh, different types of hazards. Uh, now, um, enter 2020, uh, and, and, and COVID-19 has sort of uh, thrown or complicated uh, uh, some, of, some of these dynamics by introducing a, yet another hazard uh, into the fray, so to speak, um, uh, with also recent work showing that uh, in the city, but also broadly across the United States, uh, there's uh, sort of uneven impacts uh, in terms of exposure and mortality rates uh, of COVID-19. Um, and, and, and these concurrent uh, hazards uh, complicate the way we respond to them. Uh, for me, the, the sort of the classic example being uh, here in New York City, we have cooling centers uh, for certain days of the, uh, of the summer months uh, where it gets too hot, uh, which uh, are, are most effective when they can serve a, a large uh, population. Uh, however, COVID-19 sort of throws a wrench uh, in that uh, uh, by uh, sort of limiting uh, how many people can be in any one place safely. Uh, so so the, the aim of this work is uh, to look at these sort of overlapping hazards um, and, and sort of generate maps of where uh, there are hot spots or, or, or cool spots of, of these overlaps in New York City and how those relate to uh, uh, existing uh, social economic vulnerabilities. So, to, to do that, um, we took uh, zip code level data from the New York City Department of Health uh, of uh, the, the positive uh, or the positivity rates in New York City uh, at the height, excuse me, of the, of the of, uh, 2020 summer peak. Um, and that's what you see here on that panel or that figure on the left, um, where you see some, some um, uh, uh, sort of hot spots in, 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 in or, or locations with higher uh, or significantly higher uh, COVID rates uh, than, than others, uh, especially in South Bronx, parts of Queens and Brooklyn, uh, with low spots being uh, over uh, Midtown, Upper West Side, Manhattan, uh, as examples. Uh, and then what we did is uh, we to to sort of get a, a measure of the of the weather hazard in this case heat. Um, we ran. Uh, a high resolution regional climate model over the city using uh, sort of the state of the art urbanized weather model uh, uh, in the, uh, for, for the city itself. Uh, and to do that, we uh, leveraged the wealth of civic uh, public information in, in the city, including building area heights uh, and all manner of, uh, of geometric features of the city that we then feed into this uh, regional climate model to sort of reproduce the weather of uh, summer 2020, uh, which uh, you see here in, in, in those figures on the right uh, compared to different locations, uh, JFK Airport, uh, NYC, which is a Central Park uh, weather station. Uh, on, on the very lower bottom uh, right, 
uh, you see the average daily maximum temperatures, which is what we use as our measure of extreme heat in, in the city. Uh, and you can sort of tell uh, just from that qualitatively that there are uh, certainly uh, sort of geospatial variations uh, as you go to different parts of the city uh, related to how we build our city, but also related where, where you are in relation to distance to the coast because of the sea breeze and stuff like that. Uh, now, in terms of social vulnerability, uh, we leveraged uh, essentially a subset of what the CDC calls the social vulnerability indicators um, based on the American Community Survey 2018 five-year estimates, uh, which we then re-aggregated to the, the same zip code level uh, boundaries that uh, you saw earlier from the COVID data. Um, and, and I say a subset because we essentially uh, eliminated some of the indices that were not relevant for New York City uh, after some uh, collinearity tests. Uh, for example, stuff that we removed was uh, percentage of people in mobile homes, which is not a, a significant number uh, in New York City. Uh, and we, essentially we develop a, a vulnerability index based on, on, on these indicators that are listed here. Um, so you can see in, 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 in that figure, uh, areas of high uh, vulnerability versus low vulnerability. And, and this map is, is, is very similar to, to similar efforts uh, for use in different types of vulnerability studies in New York City. Um, finally, what we did was uh, compute a, a sort of multi-hazard risk index. Now that uh, essentially combining uh, or creating our own hazard index, combining the COVID and the daily maximum temperatures that we simulated uh, with this social socioeconomic vulnerability index that I uh, just showed you uh, to sort of highlight where are the hotspots um, of, uh, of both heat and, and, and COVID-19 uh, in the context of that social vulnerability. Uh, and, and, and you see that right here in this map on the right uh, with the areas marked in red as being uh, on the sort of a, a upper end and blue being on the lower end. Uh, and you see uh, uh, on the areas of high uh, sort of a combined risk being the South Bronx, upper Manhattan, uh, where you essentially have very high combination of or, or, or combination of high um, social vulnerability, vulnerability indicators such as low income or high proportions of uh, people of color, uh, as well as very high afternoon temperatures and COVID-19 incidents. Uh, now these might essentially be related in, in many ways as some recent work has shown that uh, temperatures are often related to um, uh, redlining maps uh, due to the, the way we build uh, our cities and, and, and sort of uh, uh, plan out our green spaces, as well as the amount of people that actually have to go and, uh, and had to essentially essential workers that still kept working and, and commuting to work during the pandemic uh, sort of shut down days. Uh, so that is definitely reflected here in, in the map. Um, you see sort of uh, low or cool spots, uh, which in this case mean not necessarily that uh, it's low incidence of any one particular uh, hazard, uh, rather that the combination of the two uh, is not a, a particularly high. Uh, and you see that close to, to the southeast uh, coast, uh, mainly due because they're relatively cool areas because of the sea breeze that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, and, and, and that's sort of reflected in the map as well. Um, so, so yeah, so a, a lot of the work that we're doing sort of uh, highlights uh, where these overlaps of, uh, of two, only two hazards, heat and COVID-19, are, are significantly high, um, and, and where they overlap with, with high social vulnerability areas, uh, like I just uh, showed, um, which essentially show, leads to these sort of hotspots where we really have to be careful how we deal or how we plan the response. Uh, remember the, the, the sort of example of the cooling centers that I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and then we're gonna extend this work to, to other weather related hazards as well. Uh, we have flooding that can be significant in different parts of the city, um, as, as well as uh, uh, different types of uh, infrastructure failure uh, that we have been reported. And we can sort of combine these uh, to get a better sense of how to respond to, to sort of these overlapping hazards. Uh, so yeah, so very happy to answer questions uh, coming up and uh, thank you for having me.